November 10th, Wolverines hosting their first NCAA tournament game since 2002 against in-state rival Central Michigan. First half, Mays and Blue come out a little flat. Just two minutes in, Bailey Brandon with the long throw in. Laura Goss on the far post bumps it in, and just like that, U of M trailed 1-0. Wolverines wake up. All kinds of scoring opportunities in the first half, out shooting the Chippewas 10-4. Just not much to show for it. Kem Izarike here to Cassie Collins, and she finds the post. Moments later, off of the Shalina Zadorsky corner, Holly Hine over to Megan Tui, who finds the crossbar. Going into the locker room at halftime, the Wolverines held the advantage everywhere, but on the scoreboard, as it was still 1-0 Central. Like, I know it's frustrating not to get those opportunities and not put them away, so it's basically we just had to keep going. We knew that we'd get them, and just the fact that we had to put them away. More of the same in the second. Ezereke finds yet another crossbar for the maize and blue. Then, with just six minutes left in the match, Michigan's would-be game-tying goal was waved off when they were called for offsides. CMU goalie Stephanie Turner then made some big plays and big saves down the stretch, and the Wolverines' hopes weren't looking too good. When we went down 1-0 with just two blunders um, on the play, uh, I was just so disappointed. And, uh, and then we started getting chance after chance, and not half chances, good chances, chances right in front of the net, chances, all of our best chances were right in front of the goal. And we were missing sitter after sitter. And so some days you wonder, is this just not your day? But with less than one minute left, Chloe Sasenko finds Claire Stacio, whose header just sneaks in. The first goal of the year for Michigan's banged up senior captain would send the game into overtime. You know, it's a fantastic story. I mean, she's had a stress reaction. We've had to manage it all year long. We've, she's had very few minutes, very little practice time. She's never scored a head goal in her life. And uh, for her to flip one in the upper 90 was just amazing, but it just shows how much she wanted it. Um, you know, I just wanted to make it dramatic. Last time on the field. Um, you know, I, it's not like I planned it that way. I would go for a goal every single game I get out there. But, you know, like I said, it's, this is my last time I'm ever going to play on Michigan's field. I um, wanted to leave my mark a little bit. I told our staff, I said, we're winning this game. This will be over quick. And uh, because we're creating the chances, they're on their heels, they're tired, we're fresh. And we had, there was just a huge momentum shift after that goal. In the OT, U of M very strong, almost putting it away in the first minute. Emily Jaffe has her shot stopped by Turner. And then four minutes later, it's Jaffe again as she finds Ezerike, her 14th goal of the year and her second OT game winner. This one helps U of M move on to round two. Jaffe, she got the ball and she just took players on and it was like her hard work that got the goal. She did well taking on the players and the shot just rebounded and it was just an easy tap in, but she did the hard work. It's NCAAs, it's every game's a little bit harder than it is in season and I just think that we wanted it more and that's that's what showed on the field. Our depth tonight was huge. I think. I think we wore Central out with the depth and the players coming off the bench. Uh, Corinne Harris, I thought, had a fantastic game coming off the bench. Um, Shelby Garcia coming off the bench. I felt like we, we just dominated the game in the width, and Kim, I thought, was just absolutely fantastic once again. Now that the seniors can walk off the U of M soccer stadium field as victors in their final home game, the Wolverines will now travel to Penn State to face Portland on Friday in the second round of the NCAA tournament. For MGoBlue.com, I'm Anthony Polidano.